<laughs> Amen. I mean, Jesus was a friend to sinners. You know, he, you know, they, they should not be one to hang out with you. There should be some holiness in your way. Talking about, well, I like you. You don't judge me. Uh -huh. hey, man, judgment should be popping off of you like, like hot grease in the frying pan. You ever throw a, you ever, everybody, well, most of y'all almost, y'all know some, any of y'all know black people? Black, a lot of black people fried chicken. Now, I'm talking about real black people. Some of y'all like fake black, y'all half black, now never, you don't even know black people. <laughs> y you got the grease. It's frying in the pan. You take a little bit of water. Psst. Black people know, it's frying time. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else cooking in lukewarm grease. <laughs> and they never come back to your house to eat. <laughs> Where is this message going? It was good in the beginning. I'm I'm closing. I'm definitely out of time. Now you ever remember Moses? You ever heard of Moses? God visited Moses, and Moses had all these people that he had a problem with. And God, and Moses told Mo, and Moses told God, he says, "You said you know me by name. You said you're gonna have grace on me." He said, "Now, if I have found favor in your sight, this is what he said: Show me your way." <laughs> See. You have to get to a place where you realize, you know what, God, listen to me. I'm going through a lot. I don't understand timing. I don't understand how. But you got to have to guarantee me you have a way to do this. Yes. Jesus. See, because if he tells you he's going to do it, then there is a way. Yes. Amen. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of ways to come up with eight. Yes. Three plus five. I even know this one. Two and a half plus five and a half equals eight. There's a lot of ways to come up with eight. So there's a lot of ways for God's will to be manifested. I just need three. It's prophet time. See, get me out of here, prophet. See, many of you are, how, how God's going to do it? When is God going to do it? There's a lot of ways. You just got to relegate it to knowing that it's in his will. How and when? Leave that to God. Settle it once and for all. You know, the Lord said this in Isaiah. My ways are not your ways. As the heavens are high, so are my ways higher than yours. So that means whatever you're believing God to do, there's a way. See, I, maybe maybe y'all need crack or something because y'all looking half sleep. You need to get excited that there are ways. There are a lot of ways for God to do what he said he's going to do. I think, this is just a thought, I'm not saying this is from heaven. I think when you figured out the way is when he switches up. He's a hard God to please. <laughs> He's a, don't play him. Oh, I know how you're going to do it. Be like, <laughs> oh, I know how you're going to. Come on. When he created, when he created salvation, everybody thought, oh, I know. Oh, maybe, maybe another burning bush. Instead of the burning bush, maybe God this time can burn the whole mountain. But no, he said it in the beginning of creation. The seed of the woman shall bruise your head. Now, how many of you know that seed is the same word as offspring? But also, how many know that men carry seed? I'm going to talk to the wall. What woman you know carry seed? But he said a woman with a seed is going to destroy the devil. Same would be like, well, maybe God made a mistake. Finally, I got him. No woman got seed. But here come this woman. Little virgin popped up pregnant without a man. See, come on, help me. See, God has plenty ways to do it. See,
See, you're worrying about how and when. You have one thing to worry about. Why? Why are you going to do it? And God's going to say, because I want to do it. Why are you going to heal me? Because I want to heal you. Why are you going to bless me? Because I want to bless you. Why are you going to deliver me? Because I want to deliver you. Look at 16 people and say it's about his will. Let me read this last verse. Come on, stand to your feet. I never got to my point. Jesus in Matthew 18, 14 says this, Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones shall perish. Second Peter 3, 9 says this, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. Psalm 40, verse 7 through 8 says this, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is written in my heart. The whole Bible was written to show God's will. To the point that Jesus himself says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Now, how many of you are really saved? Now, I'm not talking about half saved, partial saved. How many realize that your life is hid in Christ in God? So if Jesus' life was written in the book, then your life is also written in the book. Now, my last story. You ever heard of Jonah? Now, let me just give you this story with Jonah. Jonah was a bigot. He was a Jewish bigot. He A bigot. You know some of you used to be bigots. I didn't say biggie. I said bigots. Just because you lost weight, thought you, you ain't no bigot. No. And Jonah, God told Jonah this. Let me read this. Don't go there. Jonah, this is what God told Jonah, because I want everybody in here to leave today's service with a sense of purpose. You might not know everything, but one thing you're going to know today for a surety that if God's on your side, it will work out right. You may be struggling with your identity. You may be struggling with timing. You may be struggling. You got a deadline. You might struggle there, and God might just allow you to struggle, because he's not going to be moved by your fear. Fear is not going to move God. You know, I mean, you know, when you look at the, 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 the Bible, Jesus says, Satan cometh. But he's got nothing in me. You know, and he told Pilate, he said, if God didn't give you the power to do that, you wouldn't be able to do it. So if you're going through the worst time of your life, God's allowing it unless you're dumb. Now, there's some dumbness. What you need to do is you need to act like, we, like in Psalm. It says, search my heart. Try me. See if there's any wicked thing in me. And that's what's good about church. That's why pastors are in churches, to show you how wicked you might be. Come on, help me. Now watch this. Jonah 1, verse 2. 1 and 1, 2. Look what it says. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. He didn't say cry for it. Cry against it, for their wickedness is come up for me. In other words, go tell them they're wrong. Jonah books. He goes somewhere, you know, then he goes, to, I think he gets a fillet of fish or something like that. He's on his way, get a fish sandwich, he become the fish sandwich. Right? And then he begins, he comes back and he preaches and verse Chapter 3, verse 5. Only reason why I'm taking time with this, I want you to hear this because I want you to understand that God has a way of changing judgment against you. Amen. Some of you in here right now are in a bad way because you've been bad. Santa Claus ain't bringing you nothing. But God can turn. 
See, God doesn't have to repent as if he sinned. But he can change his mind if he promised to punish you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Say your time was up. Yes. Right? Like, what's that? What was his name? Uh, what's that guy? Hezekiah. His time was up. God told him, get your house in order. You got 15, you know, no, you got, you're going to die. You're going to die. That's it. He said, a great prophet. He didn't say a regular prophet. He said a, pro a great prophet, not somebody that said, ah, I, I think the Lord is saying ah, that you're going to go into the hospital. Ah, I just sent somebody in your family sick. No, no. He had a great prophet tell him, get your house in order. Yes. He left. Yes. He turned his face toward the wall. Yes. He talked to God. Yes. God told the prophet, go back and tell him, I'm giving him 15 years. God can change. If there was a judgment against you, God can change it, even if God gave you that judgment. God's not like the Persian king. What was her name? What was that girl's name? Esther. Esther, husband. Remember, he wrote the decree and he said, I can't take it back. God can make a decree and take it back. But one thing he won't take back is the, the decree to bless you. He said, I purpose that you'll be with me forever. Now, here's the story. Uh, can, I, can I read it? Amen. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet 40 days, and none of us shall be overthrown. And he leaves. He didn't give them an option. Come on, I want you to hear this. I believe today is a defining moment in every one of our lives that God wants to settle once and for all that he's for us and not against us. You have to settle that if you want to go forward. Anybody ever got married? Can you imagine the bride not showing up? I got married. I did. I was there. For real, I was in the back, and they thought it was important for them to tell me she was there. <laughs> Come on, help me. I'm sitting back there. I, I had no doubt. But then again, I started wondering, why, where's she at? Then they came in and they said, she's here. I was like, good. After a while, you doubt whether or not God's going to show up or not. Come on. And look what happened. He said, and Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh, now watch this, believed God and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be claimed and published through Nineveh by the decree, by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, now this is what's important. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Here's the key. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? This was a wicked people. Jonah never gave them the ingredients for deliverance. But here we are, the people of God, just waiting on God. And we won't do anything to advance the kingdom, to better ourselves. And we wonder if God is still going to move. God's not going to move until you move. Take a breath. Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. You know how I became a great teacher of God's word? I did nothing. I just sat around. I went to church every day and did nothing. I just sat there and it just dropped on me. One day I started teaching everybody. I went through hell, high water, stayed in there longer than I should, studied everything about how to get out and didn't get out. Nothing is going to drop on you if God has promised to bless you. There's a process. But look what they said. He said, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. 
and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Amen. Now, what happened in this story? The bigot Jonah got angry because he wanted them not to repent. He wanted God to kill them. Now I want to deal with the bigot in you. There is a bigot in you that wants to be lazy, slothful, don't study, don't read, don't get up, don't encourage anybody. That's the bigot. That bigot wants to see you destroyed. Come on. But I got news for that bigot. We're going to put that bigot under the spigot. And we're going to hit him with a head with a cricket. No. What they call it? What's that? What's that game? What that croquette? Now, listen. I cracked the joke, and some of y'all didn't even get it because it wasn't funny. But here, here's the key: How many are tired of just waiting on God to do something? See, y'all think y'all said something wrong, but you're gonna go home tonight crying. Oh, you're tired. You're frustrated. You know it ought not be like that. But God will say unto you. What are you adding? Have you been adding to your faith some virtue? Have you been adding to your virtue some knowledge? Have you been adding some loving kindness? Have you been adding some temperance? Have you been adding some patience? See, when you add these things, you should be neither be barren nor unfruitful 